I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to provide some context for today's presentation. Uh, as you know, you may be as frustrated as I am. Often there's so much, so many reports and studies on a particular topic, such as student retention. And as you know, this has been studied for decades. Yet the reports and the information in that rarely get put into practice. So the idea of bridging research and practice is where Engage comes into play. Engage is an extension service project funded by NSF's Research on Gender and Science and Engineering program. And extension service projects are a rather exciting and unique NSF program because the innovation is in the mechanisms and strategies that enable the research. The research has already been done. What we're doing, though, is getting schools on board to use this research to affect retention. Our focus is on the first and second year because, as you know, uh, those students are most vulnerable to switch out of engineering. We've also selected strategies that disproportionately improve interest and engagement in engineering among women and underrepresented minorities, but no doubt improves the undergraduate experience for all students. The following slide talks about the research strategies. And as I said, we've chosen three. Uh, assessing students' spatial visualization skills as freshmen, and then providing curriculum to improve those skills who, of students who fall below a threshold. That's one strategy. Second is encouraging faculty to use and develop examples that are familiar and relevant to students to teach technical concepts in engineering, math, and science. And then the topic of today's webinar, which is our third strategy, is to enhance the ability for faculty and students to interact in and out of the classroom. There's a rigorous body of research on the student impact of faculty-student interaction with regard to intention, uh, retention, and a much more extensive reference list can be found on the Engage website. In a nutshell, there's a, a clear link between faculty level of faculty-student interactions and student satisfaction and degree completion. Research studies published in Science Magazine and others produced for NSF and ASEE have all found similar results. Students who interact with their professors and come away with a positive result are more likely to make progress and persist in the field. Interactions with faculty members especially make a difference for female students and underrepresented minorities. And although so much is known about how faculty-student interaction positively influences students, we can't forget the positive outcomes for faculty as well. Uh, students who feel they can interact with their faculty members and do so end up asking questions, engaging in class, and just generally doing better work. This ultimately saves time for faculty and office hours by improving student learning and overall decreasing struggles. Uh, a number of studies have also documented how student course evaluations are positively related to improve faculty-student interaction or faculty accessibility. Uh, faculty who have positive interactions, even small ones, uh, with students were perceived more positively by their students. And in another study uh, cited there of 800 college courses, including a large subset of engineering classrooms, faculty evaluations were not associated with workloads, but instead they were positively associated with faculty members setting a positive environment for learning, including being more approachable and sensitive to learning of students. And this was reflected in the student course evaluations of their faculty. So, it makes a huge difference on both sides. 
Patricia Berry, who is going to talk about two programs that facilitate faculty-student interaction, one with a faculty focus and one with a student focus. Well, I'd like to introduce Tricia, who is Director of the Women in Engineering Program at the University of Texas at Austin. She leads the efforts on recruitment and retention of women and concurrently serves as the Director of the Texas Girls Collaborative Projects and leader of the UT Austin Engaged Team. Trisha served WePAN as President-Elect, President and Past President from 2007 to 2010. And Trisha also has a, an engineering degree and her MBA. So uh, Trisha, without further ado, I'm handing the mic over to you. Thanks, Susan. Well, I'm excited to be here today and excited to share these two strategies that we have implemented here at the University of Texas at Austin. I think that we have found these both to not only be fairly simple to implement, surprisingly so, but also incredibly effective. And so I aim to show you that today. So we're going to launch a little poll here just to, to start us off to talk about the faculty side of things. So why don't faculty have more frequent, high-quality interactions with students? Take a second there to vote. Let's get a sense of what you all think. Um, and it may be several things that you want to, to click on, but um, click on, on all of those that you believe. Not enough time, difficult to interact, don't want to get too close to students, student interaction is not a priority, or that mentoring process is just too demanding. Why don't faculty have more frequent interactions? So let's see, what do you have to say? So of course not enough time. We all don't have enough time for anything that we do. Hard to interact with students was also high up there. Mentoring is demanding. Absolutely all of those things. Okay, so you know there's a lot of reasons why faculty don't have more interactions with students. And I think with our initiatives, um, our connections class, next slide please, the faculty have an opportunity to address some of these things. So for, for us, Cookies in the Classroom, or otherwise known as Cookies Connections Classes, was born. So how did this come about? So you heard Susan say that I was the, the lead of our engaged team. But we have some faculty on our team, some other staff on our team, and we got together and we really started to brainstorm what could we do? How could we grab the attention of faculty to really pay attention to this faculty-student interaction piece that we know is so critical. And so what came out of the team, and really it came from our faculty members on the team, was the cookies in the classroom concept. Their thought was that if, if you could bribe students with cookies, you can also bribe faculty with cookies. They like cookies just as much. And maybe if we offer to bring in cookies into the classroom, faculty will take a little bit of time out of their lecture period to have a conversation with the students and to create some of these critical connections with the students in their classroom. So we offered up a pilot in spring 2011 and fully engaged our faculty and invited all to participate in spring 2012 and then we offered it again this fall. So as far as the invitation process, we identified all first and second year engineering courses. We're really focusing in on those critical first two years that our students are, are here and that we're really wanting to focus on the retention piece. And so we went through the course schedule and identified all of those faculty who are teaching first or second year engineering courses and invited them to have cookies delivered straight to their classroom. That was the subject line. And in our invitation to them, we included the requirements, and I'll get to those in a second, as well as personalize those invitations to include their class, their the date of the class, the time of the class, so they really knew we were reaching out to them specifically and we wanted to engage them in this process. And we also, of course, tied in how this connected to both college as well as department goals on retention and graduation rates for our engineering students. So the Cookies Connection class requirements are, are fairly simple, and again, we aim to keep these very easy for our faculty to implement. It needed to be a first or second year engineering course. We wanted to impact that faculty-student interaction with our first and second year engineering students. We asked that the faculty spend at least 20 minutes during one of their class periods sharing information about themselves. 
to share about their research, to talk about their hobbies, to talk about how they even decided to become a professor, and really any other information that they were comfortable sharing with their student. But 20 minutes was the, the minimum time requirement. And then we asked that they send a post survey to follow up with the students, to ask the students for after the process. And so here's an example of the invitation that we've sent out. So you can see their underlined impact retention and four-year graduation rates. Again, trying to tie it to current university, school, and departmental goals. Bolding the class so they know that this email was going to them and this is the class that we're interested in reaching out to them for. Gives the time and the date and the class um, location. So all of that information is right there. And it invites them to let us know if we want, if they want cookies delivered straight to them. So what were the results? So, so far in the three semesters that we have offered this, we've reached 44 total classes. And you can see the breakdown there. We've reached over 2,000, uh, 2,286 total student enrollment. So of course, you know, not all students might have been in the classes during the time that the cookies were delivered, but that was our total potential reach, the total students enrolled in those 44 classes. We've had all departments represented in the students that we have reached. All eight majors from our seven different departments are represented in those 44 classes. Faculty from six of the departments have been involved. So some of our departments offer classes that are offered out to multiple majors. So as far as student post surveys, we've had a total of 387 students respond to the surveys that we had sent out through the faculty. So about a 17% response rate. Our enrollment, while I would love to say that it's 34% female, it is not. But our females have responded at a higher rate than our males. Um, our actual overall student enrollment is about 23% women. So our, our females are a little overrepresented in this. As far as other questions on the post survey that we asked them, we wanted to know, did you learn something new during this connection class? Did you make some new connection with your faculty member? And 97% of the students agreed that they had learned something. They were strongly agreed. And then we really dug in a little bit deeper. We asked them a, an open-ended question. Describe your impressions of the professor during and after the class. And there were all kinds of responses, as you might imagine. But a few themes seemed to, to pop up. A lot of them felt that their professor was nice. 16% of the responses had something related to nice in there. 12% interesting. The fun and funny popped up a lot. As well as knowledgeable, cares, and open. So all of these, again, are really important for our students to, to be able to make those connections to their faculty member and to feel like they can go to them for office hours approach them with questions, maybe even connect with them for career opportunities down the road. We also asked the students if they feel there's value in having a connections class. And 94% of them, again, strongly agreed or agreed with that. And then when we asked them what was that value, what did you find of value in that connections class, really that connection to the professor came up the most. 43% of the responses indicated that connection was really valuable to them. Also mentioned quite often was this learning about the professor, learning about their background, learning about their research, learning about how they got to where they were. A number of students indicated that it also opened their eyes to other career path opportunities that they had not considered before. Or real world applications, making those connections, and you saw that was one of those other engaged strategies in this connections class. They were able to see how the work that was being either done by the professor or the work that was being done in their class was connected to those real world applications. And then students also found that it was interesting and motivating. So if we can, if we can spend 20 minutes and get our students motivated, why would we not want to bring cookies to the classroom? So I also have some great quotes. Um, again, as the students filled out these open-ended portions of the post survey, we got some great information from them. And these are just uh, some of the examples. So the faculty seemed passionate, and it, it really motivated me as a person and as an engineer. This second one here sparked a new interest for me. 
how exciting is that? The student had in the longer version of their response had never really considered this type of technology and research as part of their degree plan. Didn't even know that this is what the faculty member was involved in in his research. It sparked an entire new level of understanding and, and possibly a whole new career path and motivation for this student. And then, of course, I love the one, you know, professor actually had a personality. Uh, you know, if the professor comes in each day and just focuses on that lecture, sometimes that personality might get lost. And so this allowed the student to, to make that connection, and we saw that time and time again in the responses. This one I think you all might find a little amusing. I know I did. It was that, you know, maybe we're on to something with these, this engaged thing, and maybe maybe spending time in the classroom having a conversation with the faculty is something we should look into a little bit more. It might actually correlate with office hours attendance. So I thought, I got a good little giggle about that. I thought, well, absolutely. I think we are on to something. And then, of course, freaking awesome. We've got several answers like that as well. Cookies don't hurt in that. As far as our faculty post surveys, we had eight people respond this fall out of 12 total faculty who participated this fall. A number of our faculty taught numerous entering first or second year student classes. So they had us bring cookies to all of their classes. And you can see that they were distributed across professor, associate professor, assistant professor, and lecturers. So we usually get a wide variety of instructors, professors who participate in the cookies class. So what did our faculty say? We asked them, what did you share with your students? What was part of that 20 minutes? And all of them shared their work history, which is fabulous. We wanted them to, to provide that information, and they did. They also shared their research area. What are they currently working on? And then some got more into their personal background, their hobbies, their family information. Everyone shared some aspect of those final three, just perhaps in a different combination. You can see one of the quotes down there at the bottom from one of our faculty members who said that she definitely felt like it helped build that better relationship with the students and it changed their body language, which I thought was an interesting observation. It really seemed to open up the students to her a little bit more. We also asked the faculty what was the value that they felt came with the connections class. And again, they were really feeling this sense of connection to their students, either through this sense of accessibility that they, they felt their students gained or improved relationship with their students. They also liked the informal feel to the class. They liked having the, the, the cookies brought in, which really seemed to, to make it not seem like the lecture portion of their class while they were having that connection. And here's a couple more quotes from our faculty. That it helped students see this faculty member as a person they could relate to, and doing that early on really helped seem to get the students more comfortable asking questions. And then also, again, the relationship with the students is a little more personal. So it did have value to the faculty, and they recognize that as well. So where are we going from here? Our future plans are that we're continuing to offer this out to faculty at the beginning of each fall and spring semester. We'll continue with our email invites. We're also going to use our faculty committee in the coming semesters to reach out individually to faculty who are teaching first and second year courses. Emails oftentimes get lost in the, the mess that we get in our inbox. And so we assume that if we can do the emails as well as some personal invitations, we may actually reach more and more of those first and second year student classes. We're also looking at including the cost and grant proposals. This is a super simple, fairly inexpensive method to do improving retention and graduation down the road. And so we're going to get this included in more places so we can continue to fund it. And then, of course, continuing assessment and evaluation as we go on so we can continue to see that we're making the impact that, that we've seen already. So let's flip and start looking at the student interaction side. So here's another poll. So why don't students engage in their interactions with their faculty? Let's see what you have to say on this one. This is also to check and see if y'all are still awake out there intimidating. Oh my goodness, yes. Faculty are scary people. All right, or they don't know what to say, not having trouble in the class. It's hard to go ask a question if you don't feel like you have any questions to ask and they don't see the value. All right, great. Well, talk to me speaks exactly to this. It speaks to helping students understand what this approach is. So talk to me was piloted in 2010 
across five different schools, and the University of Texas at Austin was one of those. And through our five schools, we were able to reach 223 students. Talk to Me was funded by a grant from the Engineering Information Foundation, and what was provided out to the schools was a lot of resources and information we could use to directly implement the program with our students. It included facilitator instruction, student handouts, how to deliver the information, how to coach the students through the process, and then some assessment tools as well. And there's a toolkit we'll show you uh, here in a little bit. So again, 223 students completed the post-seminar survey. There could have perhaps been more students involved who just didn't, didn't, of course, fill out the survey. But of those who did, 95% felt like it increased their interest in reaching out to their professor. It also increased their confidence. So again, that intimidation factor, the Talk to Me project, helped address. And then 87% indicated that they planned to meet with at least one professor before the end of the semester. So great results with students who perhaps otherwise would not have headed in to visit with their faculty. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the presentation itself. So the presentation for the students goes into a number of, of these concerns that the student has. And it's really great about addressing that intimidation factor, the how-to of visiting a professor, and and also what to think about, what could come up, some of those scenarios that they may encounter in the process. So it talks about first what happens when you talk to a professor. What does that look like? How does that feel? And those misconceptions that are often out there. Again, you know, the, the professor is very scary and doesn't have time for them, or that you have to ha actually have all the answers to your questions before you can go ask your professor a question. It gives starting points and talking points. It actually gives the students some of the words to use when they approach their faculty members. So it takes away that, some of that fear factor. And it takes away some of that intimidation of, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. We give them the words. It also talks about the logistics. And this is just some of this professional development piece that we know our students seem to get. How do you email a faculty member? How do you approach them? How do you address them? Again, words do you say, and what does that process look like? It also talks about how to make a great first impression, how to introduce yourself when you walk into that faculty member's office. How do you let them know which class that you're in and what you're coming in there to talk to them about? And then it also addresses what could go wrong. You know, they may reach out to a faculty member who really isn't responsive. And we wanted to make sure that they understood it's not about them and that they are okay and they need to continue to go seek out other faculty if they run into challenges like that. So what did we do at the University of Texas at Austin? Well, in the fall 2010 pilot semester for Talk to Me, we led a workshop for all the student participants in our first year interest groups. And these are seminar classes that are hold held weekly throughout the fall and the spring semester with first-year engineering women. Within one of our class periods during the fall, we led this 20-minute Talk to Me presentation and included Q&A with the students as well as our student mentors that are leading, helping us to lead the FIGS. It included the survey and then it included a follow-on discussion in later FIG sessions to see, did you meet with any faculty? How did that go? Let's hear some examples of what's happening. And we were able to talk through some of those things that we had discussed when we had done the original presentation. And then the follow-on to that was that we've done seminars in our FIGS in fall 2011 and 2012. So our results that first semester was, in, um, was that we had 57 students complete the survey. 65% of those students felt an increased interest in meeting with their professor. And, you know, we had 35% that still felt somewhat of an increase in an interest. Uh, as far as confidence, we also were able to increase that confidence level. 58% felt that increased level and 33% somewhat. 98% of them said they planned to meet with at least one professor. So that was a huge success getting them to, to feel comfortable enough to want to go meet with that professor and to see the value in doing that as well. 
So as far as future plans, again, since that original pilot, we've continued to offer at least one workshop each fall and uh, semester to our FIGS. We've changed it up a little bit. We still use the presentation that was part of Talk to Me, but what we have added on is bringing in a faculty panel or one faculty member to help share his or her, usually her, personal experience on students coming in and asking questions, asking questions in class, using office hours for learning about their research, things like that, to give the students, again, the sense that the faculty members are not scary people. They want students to come in. They want to have that interaction and to talk through, here's what I like and here's what I don't like in these experiences. We also have had a huge push on four-year graduation rates in the last six months or so here on campus. And as part of that, the FIG curriculum across the entire Cockrell School has included some core content. And aspects of the Talk to Me seminar have been included in that core content so that all students across the Cockrell School, all first-year students in these FIGs, are getting some of this content and encouraged to go and visit with our faculty. These are both really very simple ways to, to have some great impact for our students. The students and the faculty with both of these programs have responded incredibly, and we're looking forward to the things that continue with both of these projects here at the University of Texas at Austin. So we've now arrived to our question and answer portion of the webinar. My name is Shauna Fletcher from The Ohio State University, and I'm serving as your moderator today. I'd like to say thank you to Tricia and Susan for today's presentation and invite both of you to chime in and answer questions that we have regarding the presentation. Um, this one probably is for Tricia. It looks like you really tried to make a personal connection with the faculty. And how did that really translate to their increased level or willingness to interact um, as sort of a pay it forward to students? Did you find any significance with the willingness of faculty to interact with the students just because you personally reached out to them? Um, you know, I think it was interesting. I think the faculty that have been involved so, so far are probably faculty who are um, are probably the more interactive faculty, if maybe that's the politically correct way to say it, than, than perhaps others. Um, the faculty that have been involved are faculty who have volunteered for our program, so there perhaps is a personal connection. They paid attention to the invitation. They are faculty who want to make a difference with their students, and you see that through innovative teaching techniques. You see that through their participation in different events as sponsors of student organizations and so on. Um, you know, I think part of why we want to use our faculty committee as we move forward is that we, we really want to reach some of those faculty who maybe aren't making the best connection with their students and who perhaps are so focused on getting in there, teaching the lecture, and getting out that spending this 20 minutes could make a great impact. So. So it's a mix. We're really trying to not only encourage those faculty who are, are great with students to take this step back and have even richer conversations, but reaching out to those faculty who, who perhaps could use that help and make it a better connection. Great. You mentioned that you had faculty from six different departments who were involved and wanted the cookies in their classroom. <laughs> yes. Can you speak to, to the kinds of departments or majors that were engaged or more engaged than others? So we have had the most engagement from our electrical and computer engineering and mechanical engineering departments. And both of those are our largest departments here on campus, so it kind of makes sense that they have more faculty teaching more first and second year classes because there are more of those students. Um, we, although have had, had participation from each of the different departments, we've had at least two faculty members from each department participate, other than our biomed department, and many of their, um, their it's a small department, so I, I think that they probably are fairly connected right off the bat with their students anyway, and this may just not have seemed um, like something they need, that they needed. Mm -hmm. 
Here, here's a question for Susan that might relate to the overall Engage project and what you're finding. Um, do you find that there's a direct connection or correlation? Can you speak about the research a little bit about faculty-student interactions regarding retention? And do female faculty have a greater impact on these student populations that we're talking about, the women um, and underrepresented students? than male faculty. Is there any research out there about that? Thanks, Shauna. Um, there, is, there is research out there that indicates that having female role models as faculty is important for student engagement and persistence. However, there are probably more individual differences um, not between gender, but between individuals. So whether it's a male or a female professor uh, in terms of you know, engaging, motivating students, the individual differences really are much more apparent. Engage isn't collecting retention data. Um, many of the schools that we're working with are. We're not funded to do that. We're funded to get the information out there. But there are schools who are tracking this information, you know, tracking their activities associated with retention individually. And we hope to have more information on that as the project, uh, you know, continues. We have a lot of references and resources on the Engage site under the faculty-student interaction component of the website. The WePan Knowledge Center also, uh, you know, would provide a lot of specific studies related to these questions. I actually had a question for Tricia related to, to this. Um, to get faculty who are not necessarily so comfortable doing this kind of activity, have you ever invited them to sort of observe uh, some of their colleagues do this so that if they actually saw what was happening, they might feel better about the process themselves? We haven't done that, but I guess related to that, we have shared quotes from other faculty, and that was part of our conversation with the faculty inviting the faculty and using our faculty committee to spread the word was that when faculty who have participated in the Cookies Connection class can share their own experience of it with their peers, they may be more likely to respond. So we are, that, yeah, yeah. So that's where that's where we're headed again with with it this spring to see if we can reach more of those classes. I guess we're also hoping hoping eventually to have a, a little video vignette of a yes. professor actually doing this, at, exactly. probably at UT Austin, right? You're working yes. on that. And, and sometimes if, if people see what this is like, it, it's not so intimidating for them to get involved. It's not. And what's been interesting, I actually this week got two more requests from faculty who finally just got around to their emails that we sent out before school started. And, I can relate because there are some emails from that first week I'm still responding to. And they said, I hope it's not too late. Can we still do cookies? So we're still setting up cookie classes now. And so we might have the opportunity to get those videos a little sooner than later. But the faculty do see the value that have participated. And they are hearing the value from other faculty who have participated. We even had one at the beginning of the semester who was asking one of our engaged team members, hey, y'all doing that cookie thing again? I want cookies in my class again. <laughs> so uh, they're seeing the value. And you know they like the cookies as well. Tricia, um, what about future interactions? Do you see that faculty across an institution might be introduced to the Talk to Me program, not just in engineering? And what are ways uh, that the faculty members could potentially collaborate across an institution outside of their departments? Oh, goodness. Cross-campus collaboration. I don't know that that happens. No. Um, I, I don't see any reason why this couldn't be done in other places and in other, um, in other schools. And as far as collaboration on the cookies classes, um, uh, it's such a 
in and out kind of opportunity, um, meaning that it's you know it's 20 minutes, do it, cookies come, you talk, you're done in some respects. I don't know that there's a lot of collaboration across the actual activity itself, but it's I think easily something that that we could share with others across campus. You know, I think if we were to think about it strategically from an engineering standpoint, and so this is making me think, and I'm going to have to write this down when we're done, reaching out to those faculty, in particular in natural sciences, uh, who are teaching those intro calculus classes, physics classes, chemistry classes, and if we can have them take some of this time and create those experiences and connections with students in their classes, that include not only our engineering students, but other students, that's going to benefit our engineering students. So, so I think that's perhaps something I need to look at moving forward. And who do you think are the best people to try to run the Talk to Me series? Would that be women in engineering, program coordinators, advisors, faculty members? Do you have a suggestion for the person who could facilitate and lead this kind of an effort? Yeah, I mean, I think it can really be any of those, and, and we've run it with any of those. We have run it where uh, the Women in Engineering Program staff ran it that first pilot year. The next year, we split duties where our Women in Engineering Program staff did part of it, and our student mentor did another part. And then we've really morphed now to where it's a little bit of presentation from us, a little bit of examples from our student mentor, and then the faculty being there in the room as well to share their experiences. So we actually do it as kind of a combined effort now. And you're not, not going to hit every student with any one of those modes. So maybe, you know, maybe by us having all three in the room, we're able to hit all the students in some form or fashion with what grabs their attention the most. Um, but I think any of those can do it. Great. Um, about your response rates, for faculty, you mentioned that 8% of the faculty responded to your surveys and about 17% with the students. Is, is there a way or an incentive um, that you could have more people responding to this? Maybe um, have you thought of uh, a cookie party at the end that would be given for free to the classroom that responds the most? Or um, is there some type of an incentive? Ah, that's a good idea. Um, as far as, let me start with the faculty first. So this was the first year that we reached out to faculty for a post-survey. And, and to be honest, a couple of them answered me via email with their experience but didn't actually go online and fill out the survey. So the response rate of the actual survey wasn't as high as the actual responses from faculty. Um, they weren't they weren't completely great at following instructions. Um, so we'll be working on that with the faculty to get them to respond a little bit more. I'll be going back out to them to try to get more responses um, here later in the semester from them as well. As far as students go, 17% um, responded across all of these classes. Um, we and that response rate is probably higher this fall. I didn't break it out by this fall versus last fall. Last fall, we just sent it to the faculty members right after the class and said, send it out. And the responses we got, we called it good. This year, we've watched it a little bit closer. And we have followed up again with faculty to say, um, we haven't seen any responses from your class. Can you send it out again? Can you bug them again? We've done that a few times. So our response rate this semester uh, is probably quite a bit higher than that 17 percent. Last year it was really, really low. Great. But the, as far as having a, an actual incentive, um, we may do that. We're also trying to make sure that the students realize this is completely anonymous. So we're trying to be somewhat careful with pushing them too much because we don't want them to think that we're following who's responding and who's not. We want them to be honest on those responses. Here's another kind of a related question. Could Talk to Me be something that student organizations could adopt to create kind of a culture, a student culture meeting with faculty? Do you think that that's something that could be adopted by the students themselves? Absolutely. And 
And at least here at, at UT, I see that with our student organizations already. They do a number of things where they bring in faculty to their meetings or into different types of sessions that they have. Um, I don't know that they specifically go through some sort of formal presentation like the Talk to Me includes, but we definitely see that from that student perspective. And again, I think if it's, if it's students sharing with students why this is important, they're going to hear it very differently than if they hear it from Tricia again at WEP telling them something that they're supposed to be doing. It's just a very different message coming from the student than from us. And Tricia, how important are the cookies? Could you do this with something else, or is it really important that you give cookies during these class times? I, I should have actually gone through the data and pulled out how many times thanks for the cookies was um, mentioned, <laughs> uh, because it was mentioned a lot. I, I'll have to go back and, and pull that data. Um, I think it's really important to have something, um, whether it's cookies or candy or or, or something fun. And, I, and the reason we did this, and the reason the faculty actually said to do this, was that it, it makes it seem like a different part of the class. It makes it seem more informal. It puts the students in a different mindset when they're having this interaction with a faculty member and when they're listening, they're perhaps listening in a different way than the normal lecture. When you have the cookies in the classroom, it makes it feel like more of these other social engagements that the students have all the time. You know, every student organization meeting has food of some sort. Every, you know, women in engineering program event has food of some sort. And there's learning that happens in those events, but they're more informal in nature and, and more relaxed in nature, and you're more open to listen to things in a different way. So there's something about having those cookies that really helps. I think one of the other things that we, we learned, which was a kind of an unintended consequence, and again, I didn't pull the data on this piece, but there's a lot of comments from students who said while they were grabbing the cookies, they were enjoying the interaction with the students in their classes, and especially if you can do this the first or second week of the semester, especially in those first year courses. Students were indicating that they enjoyed grabbing the cookies. They got to meet some of their other classmates just in that process of getting the cookies. So that time where there's not even the connection with a faculty member happening was, was very valuable to them. So there's something about those cookies. I don't think we're going to drop the cookies. <laughs> That's great. Um, at this time, I think it, we can thank our speakers. Uh, 